Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which comes to us from Oxford University Press and the Judicial College. It's a book I've reviewed on quite a few occasions in the past. It's this book here. It's a pink edition this year, 16th edition. It's an important book for anybody involved in personal injury actions where you have to do with quantum and it gives you a fairly substantial indication today of how we actually assess the quantum, either in terms of judicial assessments or agreement between the parties. There have been actually very few cases in recent years as well, but more about that later on. The book, of course, is entitled Judicial Guidelines for the Assessment of General Damages in Personal Injury Cases. This is the 16th edition for 2022. The forward has been written by Lady Justice Nicola Davis <coughs> and there's an editorial team which I'll mention in a few minutes. And as I say, OUP have taken the mantle of this publication on. I'm very grateful that they have because it's a fundamental purchase for your practice. Um, I've given it a title for the review, Fundamental Guidance for uh, Personal Injury Practitioners and Judges amid the changing framework of damage assessments in the 2020s, because that's where we are at the moment. I've been practicing for a number of years now, and I can see that there are substantial changes brought about mainly, I think, by the legislation that we've had recently. Let me show you the book first of all. It's only a small book. It's cheap, it's not expensive. There's the front page, there's a spine. We'll probably just make some things out there. There at the back. There's, <coughs> there's a certain amount of information. I think I'll put a little bit of it in my um, review, but in fact I'm going to mention that when I show you the book. At the back of the book is um, my page number in the index. You should find the particular injury you're looking for there. The front of the book is actually, there's the front page, and there's another one. You can see the names of the team, people, which I'll mention later. Then you've got the blurb about OUP. Then you've got the structure. The structure of the book has changed slightly. Introduction of some additional uh, information as well. Uh, I normally go for um, orthopaedic injuries because that's the area of my practice. But of course there's a lot of additional information. And we're looking really at um, serious, um, medium and minor um, issues concerning any problems that are faced. Now, the forward has been written by um, Lady Justice Davis. It's always worth reading. She mentions a few things uh, about the guidelines since their original um, creation. And there's the first edition, which I remember, I'm old enough to, by Lord Donaldson. And in fact, he sets out why they decided to produce this book and on the 25th of March 1992. It's a long time ago now. And then the 16th um, edition introduction by the person who's actually responsible for the book, Christina Lambert, Mrs Justice Lambert. Now, she's done a really excellent job with her team, and you do need to read the introduction uh, to get some idea of what is happening. Then there's an, an update note on the uplift. This is this 10% uplift, which, which is applicable. Uh, then there's a note on multiple injuries which is also useful, I think, depending on the type of uh, case you have. Obviously, solicitors will be heavily involved in some of the more um, complex areas. Quite often I deal with these matters as uh, direct access today. Then there's something which is very important, the notice on whiplash, brought about by the legislation. And can I just say that that table on the back, which I did use recently, is very helpful uh, indeed, because that is something which will help the judge decide what the quantum might be. And it goes to the issue of problems that we might have if you have a problem like an issue of fundamental dishonesty. Because again, those, the, these are issues that are raised quite substantially. Then you get to the book, the guidelines itself, chapter one and so forth. And you can see how they're struck. And there's orthopedic injuries, which I use. And then you've got the always the split, the neck injuries and so forth, you can see it starts with uh, severe moderate. In fact, the words that are used are severe, moderate and minor. 
and those are that's where the split is and you can see that the what has happened it's been very helpful is that the rates have obviously are at the side there they've gone up and they're commensurate with where we are prior to this very substantial increase in, in inflation which we're uh, facing as I record this in the um, late summer of 2022. Can I just say that this book appeared, uh, I first used it in fact on May the 5th when I had a trial and um, this was, I had actually got the previous edition which was this one and of course I went to court with the wrong edition, <laughs> as is the case, and the judge very kindly showed me the new edition. So that's very helpful. So what do I say about the book? Well, this. We've reviewed these guidelines from the Judicial College on many occasions. Elizabeth and I have discussed it and I've decided to write this particular uh, review. The guidelines, of course, remain a fundamental purchase for practitioners in PI actions, as it's the primary source for the way damages are assessed by the court. Now, I realise that there will be case law involved occasionally, but I have found that the way it's done today is that you will look at the guidelines and you'll look at the uh, evidence you've got, including the uh, medical reports. So the actual amounts that have been listed, and they were originally listed in current law, um, and we used to have a lot of them at one stage, uh, have tended to have more of a background um, effect. So do begin by reading the forward by um, Lady Justice Davis and, of course, the introduction by Mrs Justice Lambert. And you can note the changes that have taken place for this edition. The guidelines, of course, are designed to be um, clear and logical as a framework for the assessment of damages uh, in PI cases. The first edition came out in 1992, which is 2022 now, so it's regarded at that time just at the time, in fact, I was beginning my practice as a barrister, having been called in 1991, um, it was regarded as a landmark in PI practice. Certainly we hadn't got anything when I did the bar exams and the run-up to my practice. So it was a useful introduction for me. And of course the book remains of great assistance to all parties in these types of proceedings. Each succeeding edition has built upon a developing reputation for excellence, which we, we expect with the Judicial College. And some 30 years later, the guidelines are now firmly established as essential reading for all those who are involved in personal injury litigation. And I can't stress how heavily I would rely on this as the correct formula if you're actually advising a client in conference. The new edition for 2022-16 has been updated to consider rising inflation since the last edition, but it doesn't take account of what's happened since. So we're talking really about the very low levels of inflation prior to what has happened in the sort of middle part of 2022 after the invasion of Ukraine, the huge increase, increase in energy prices and so on, which has had a big effect on the overall inflation level in, in uh, the United Kingdom. The book has been compiled this time by Mrs Justice Lambert, Master uh, Lisa Sullivan, Stuart McKechnie, King's Counsel, Stephen Snowden, King's Counsel, and Richard Wilkinson, a barrister. Now I've called them King's Counsel because I've recorded this uh, on the accession to the throne of King Charles III and, and the death of Her Majesty the Queen. The contents of this book also reflect decisions of the higher courts on quantum, which will be of greater assistance to both judges and counsel. There are not many of them. As I say, as I say they, they comment that there have been remarkably few reported decisions, they say, in recent years. We're fortunate, then, that the new guidance is provided in relation to the application for tariff-based awards for general damages under the Civil Liability Act 2018 and is most welcome because that act, don't underestimate it, has changed the landscape a bit. There's an excellent new section in um, sexual abuse matters as well as a new chapter dealing with work-related limb disorders and the Judicial College have also made efforts to identify those cases likely to fall within the new £5,000 small claims limit in certain RTA cases. I have to say I'm glad that that limit has come in. I know that some people are not happy about it, but I, I wasn't happy with the lower, um, the lower amount. I think we have to be more realistic, frankly. However, that's a matter for other people. 
The book remains edited by this working party as part of the Judicial College and, of course, OUP publish it. Now, Mrs Justice Lambert remarks that the guidelines, quote, remain a distillation of awards of damages that have been and are being made in the courts. And she's right, although there haven't been that many. And she goes on to say that we, quote, recognise that no financial award can compensate for the physical and mental suffering. I'm glad that's been put in. And she concludes with well, these words about the objective of the book itself, which is to achieve consistency in awards of general damages, recognising that this book is a book of guidelines, not tram lines. We've had that mentioned before in, in other books, but that's right, it's guidelines, not tram lines. And that any award made is the prerogative of the courts. In other words, it's not absolutely tram lines, just straight and rigid but they can, they can change, and that's the whole beauty of the guidelines and the way the common law operates. Um, I think it's an important point which practitioners always make, or should always make, to their clients. The book itself, for uh, data publication, uh, was the 11th of April 2022. One last look at it. There we go. It only runs to oh, 88 pages, something like that. There's the front spine again, and then the back. Just opening it in the middle, not on what I was doing. Asbestos related disease, big one that one. You can see large sums of money there involved. And again on the other side you can see that there is, is a very useful statement of exactly what, for instance, back injuries against you've got the severe, the moderate and the uh, minor. And certainly for my type of practice, where I don't really use solicitors much, um, you're, you're talking of relatively small sums of money. I have to say that we are not a, we are not generous with our damages in this country. I think they could be much higher, frankly, in many cases. But of course, the reason for that is that if we di if we did, um, it would have, it would have a knock on effect with everything else. However, again, that's a matter for other people. Big thank you though to uh, all the people involved in this publication, and of course to OUP for. Um, actually publishing it again and do have a look at our reviews in the journals because they are taking them and I'm hoping that uh, you, are, you can actually see the newer materials as they come out. But anyway thank you and good luck with your practice. Bye bye. <laughs>